Good morning and welcome to NBC 10 at Issue. I'm Stefania Jimenez. We're going to begin with Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta. The Philadelphia Democrat with a progressive agenda says that he's ready to take on a new job. U.S. Senator. Kenyatta wants to replace Republican Senator Pat Toomey. Now, Toomey announced last year that he wouldn't be seeking a third term in 2022. Two other candidates have also entered the race Democrat John Fetterman, now Pennsylvania's lieutenant governor, and Philadelphia real estate investor Jeff Bartos, who's a Republican. And Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta joins us now. So, sir, thank you for being here today. Happy to do it. Thanks for having me. So we just mentioned that two other people have jumped into the race. So that's Fetterman and Bartos. Now, aside from that, we do expect the field to grow, possibly with Pennsylvania Senator Sheriff Street, Montgomery County businessman Sean Gale, who also happens to be a Trump, a Trump supporter, and U.S. Representative Chrissy Houlihan of Chester County. All right. So we just mentioned all of those definite candidates, potential candidates. What sets you apart from all of them? So again, thank you, thank you for having me. And I think the country is at a fundamental crossroads right now. I've said this, you know, repeatedly. And I think what we saw on January 6th is a reminder that there's, you know, nothing written on a tablet that's come down from on high saying that America has to be successful. You know, every generation has worked to take the American promise, right? So many of those foundational documents written right here in Philadelphia to preserve and expand that promise to include more people. And for working people like me who've come from working families like mine, we know that promise has certainly not always included us. And that if you look at the makeup right now of Congress, you know, over 50% of them are, are millionaires. The other, you know, 50% are folks, many of them, who are incredibly well off. And so it's no shock to me that when working people are trying to get things that families like mine need, um, it's no surprise that those things aren't prioritized. I think that we're in a position right now that if we're going to get from where we are to where we need to go, if we're going to get about doing the business of expanding that American promise and make sure freedom, liberty, justice, the pursuit of happiness, that that is accessible for everybody, I think a big part of that is having people in government who know in their bones what's broken. Not because they read about it, not because they got a briefing on it, but because they've lived it. You know, I watched my mom uh, have to ration her insulin to make sure me and my siblings had food. I know what it's like to be evicted. I know what it's like to see my lights cut off, to go to a school that doesn't have all the resources, um, you know, that are necessary for students like me. I know exactly what these things mean. And I think that it's people like me who can be best positioned to meet the challenges that we're facing right now. How do you put your ideas into practice? How are you going to help working families? So you look at the things that I've already done in Harrisburg, and you look at the things I've been advocating for, you know, prior to me even being in elected office. You know, I say this repeatedly, eradicating deep poverty is the moral and economic issue of our generation, frankly. We need to get to a place where we're actually raising wages for working families. You know, one of the first bills I introduced in Harrisburg was a bill to raise the minimum wage uh, to 15 bucks. Uh, my bill is a little bit more aggressive than the governor's proposal, but that was one of the first bills I've, I've, I introduced. You know, I've really led the charge on big ideas that could make government more effective and responsive to working people and, and poor families. I have a bill um, I introduced with a Republican member around dealing with mental health care for young people in our schools called Phillips Law after an 11-year-old kid from my district died by suicide. Um, I've worked with Republicans as well on issues as it relates to uh, criminal justice reform and making it easier for folks who've been incarcerated to come out and get occupational licenses. And so I see this really in three big buckets. We have to be lifting wages for families and protecting folks' right to unionize, which is why I've been an outspoken advocate for the PRO Act for example, we have to make sure that everybody, everybody has access to high quality um, and affordable health care, which is why I've talked about us needing to get to Medicare for all. We have to make sure that on critical issues like school funding, that we have equitable and fair school funding. And I've been 
an unmitigated champion for that. It's a part of the reason the American Federation of Teachers endorsed me on the day I announced, the earliest they've ever endorsed a U.S. Senate candidate in the history of the union, and that's the second largest union in the entire country. Um, and when we think about, you know, the crises right now of of climate change and climate justice, I've led on that issue as well. And so I think we put these policies into practice by first and foremost having people craft policy who understands what people are going through, who understand it in a real way. And so that type of lived experience is a part of the reason um, I've been able to, in a short period of time in Harrisburg, be um, you know, a leader on so many of these issues that I mentioned, um, because I walk into the, these rooms, to these committee hearings, to these spaces with valuable experience that's important as it relates to policy, right? This is not about um, empty symbolism. This is about how we craft policy. And I lift up these ideas because I know how these things would have helped my family. I'm glad that you mentioned the minimum wage just a short while ago because here we are, the minimum wage in Pennsylvania is still at $7.25 an hour. You have been fighting for it to be raised, yet here we are. It has not moved. So how, if you can't get that through in Harrisburg, how can we trust you to get that through in D.C.? So in Harrisburg, what we have right now is complete Republican control of the legislature. And so, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, the Republicans did not elect me to lead their caucus, um, but people did elect me to fight for working families, and that's exactly what I've done. In Washington right now, what we have is the slimmest of slim Senate majorities, a 50-50 majority. And what I've said is that we need a bigger and bolder majority that's going to be empowered to do the types of things that you that you mentioned um, with your question about the minimum wage and that I mentioned um, with the list of issues that I talked about. One of the things I've said is that we have to get rid of the filibuster. That would allow us to move things like an increase in the minimum wage. That would allow us to do things like pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, um, to pass the PRO Act, which, which I mentioned. And so, you know, the good news is that we do have that majority in the Senate and the House, and we have the presidency. And I went all around the country for now President Biden. I went all around the state for now President Biden, as well as for my House and Senate uh, colleagues um, in, the, in the General Assembly. And, and so they do you think, asked, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, do you think that he's going to return the favor because you, went the first, you were one of the first lawmakers to endorse then presidential candidate, now President Joe Biden. Uh, do you think that he's going to do the same for you? So I endorsed him on the, on, the, on the day that he announced. You're absolutely right. And, you know, when he says things like, like he did at a rally that he thinks I represent the future of the Democratic Party, I think that's incredibly kind. But ultimately, Pennsylvanians are going to decide this race and they're going to decide who the next senator is going to be. And I think when I have a you know, a body of work as well as a clear vision for where we need to go that's grounded in my experience dealing with these issues personally. I think that that's something that resonates all across Pennsylvania. And it's why I've been all around the state multiple times talking about these issues and really seeing that there is a hunger out there for authentic leadership. And that's something that I bring in spades. All right, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. That is Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta. Thank you for joining us. Always we'll a pleasure. Soon. Thank you for having me. And stay with NBC10 at issue as we introduce you to more of the candidates. On our next show, you're going to meet Republican businessman Jeff Bartos, who is also vying for Senator Toomey's seat.